Hello everybody, in this video we will make an introduction to the course and we will start talking about dynamical system. Okay, so what's a dynamical system? Okay, so in a dynamical system we have some sort of elements. So these can be inputs or uh, other kind of like initial conditions or parameters. Let's say u. Okay, ui and it goes like that. So let's change the thickness and we have some sort of, sort of variables and these can be outputs. Let's say yi, it can be like one, two, three, a multiple of outputs. And the basic idea is there exists a time dependent, okay, cause and effect relationship between these variables and elements or elements and variables. And in general, uh, the behavior changes if we change the elements. This is the whole idea. Uh, and it's generally kind of hard to explain direct cause and effect relation in a like uh, memoryless or uh, time independent manner. Okay, uh, the elements can range from atoms. Okay, so these can be very tiny elements such as molecules to the oceans and planets. So the basic the scales of the elements can vary differently. Similarly, time scales can uh, go from picoseconds to years and even decades, years and decades and even eons. Okay, so these are all range of dynamic systems and we have similar tools to explain, analyze these kind of systems. Okay, so what's the goal, uh, first of all, uh, when we talk about dynamic system from an engineering perspective or scientific perspective? First of all, we need to come up with mathematical models. Okay, so models. Okay, so what are the models? Okay, the idea is obtaining a mathematical uh, description such as the one here, y that is equal to, for example, f. This is a mathematical description or abstraction of the system, okay, which technically describes the behavior uh, of the dynamic relation between these variables, elements, and other kind of uh, external or internal sources. Okay, so always keep in mind that any model is technically a wrong representation of the actual system. I really like a, a quote from a, a famous a statistician, George E. Box. George, George E. Box. Okay, and he states that all models are wrong. Okay, so all models are wrong. Even the most complex parsimonious model cannot capture some behavior or some element in the dynamical system. But important thing is not obtaining uh, like uh, correct true models or even uh, we don't even try to uh, find the as uh, best as model uh, as best uh, model as possible in terms of connectedness. The idea is obtaining useful models. Okay, so useful models can sometimes be very complex. Your all ideas hold capturing the behavior or it can be uh, not simple enough, which is accurate in some degree, but they may be useful especially from our perspective because we will try to design controllers and simple structures are super useful because our systems and controls will generally work in limited computational sources. Okay, so let's talk about representations of dynamical systems. Okay, so we, let's start with the familiar one, differential equations. Okay. So what's a differential equation? If you remember from your differential equations courses, a ordinarily constant coefficient differential equation looks like this. A n y to the power n, which is like n derivative of y. Okay, here our dependent variable is equal to y. Okay, so a1 y prime plus a0 y. Okay, uh, and y is the output or dependent variable. Similarly, we can al also uh, similar expression in the input dynamics, which is bm un equals like this b1 u prime plus b0 u. Okay, this is constant coefficient ordinary differential equation. And we call these systems as, as if you remember, linear time invariant systems because they're independent from the initial condition, the timing of the initial condition, okay, that's the basic idea, and moreover, we can technically uh, express the system in a linear fashion in terms of the input-output relationship, uh, such that the output is technically depending on the input signal in a linear fashion in terms of the homogeneity and scaling. Okay, so the good thing about differential equation is, 
so you can represent LTI systems, which is fine, but it's very easy to uh, extend to time varying systems, also nonlinear systems. How we can make a differential equation time varying, which is very easy without uh, breaking its linearity? These coefficients becomes depending on time, such as instead of a1, if we write it a1 of t, now it's a time varying system. Okay, in order to make it nonlinear, uh, what we can do is we can uh, play with this uh, output and input variable. So instead of a0y, for example, if we have a0y square or something like that, it becomes a nonlinear system because it will break the linearity assumption between the input and output dynamics. So it's one of the most common and useful uh, representations of dynamical systems, and we will technically use on differential equations a lot in this course. Okay, so the second representation is called impulse response representation impulse okay uh, response representation okay so uh, you should be very familiar with this from your signals and systems courses okay so in an impulse response representation if the system is a linear time unit system we write y of t as h of t which is the impulse response of the systems convolution convolved with u of t and we know that it is cognitive so we can write it in this sense also, okay, h of t, which is equal to, from minus infinity to infinity, h of t minus tau, u tau, t tau, okay. So we will not use impulse response uh, representation in this course a lot, but keep in mind that this is one of the fundamentals in terms of talking about stability, some system properties, and other kind of things. And don't think these representations are disjoint representations and one should you choose one of them to go uh, analysis and control of systems. But these representations are uh, closely connected to each other. If you try to understand uh, the connections, the like differences, similarities between these representations, it will be very useful. Okay, so the limitations of impulse representation is this specific representation is only limited for linear time invariant systems okay so you cannot make it directly nonlinear it's not possible it's possible to extend it to linear time varying system using time varying impulse response function which has a slightly different representation and you cannot use all of the properties of this classical impulse response representation okay that's good so what is the next which is i think the uh, like the easiest the simplest uh, representation which is we called transfer functions and where we technically utilize Laplace transform. Okay, so in a, a Laplace transfer and transfer function framework, we have y of t. Okay, we have u of t, input and output. We, if we hypothetically take Laplace transform of y and u, we obtain y of s, okay, u of s, that's good. So in a transfer function framework, for a single input, single output system, y of s is equal to g of s times u of s and g of s is a transfer function of the system. Okay, similar to impulse response representation, transfer function is fundamentally limited to only linear time invariant systems. Okay, but we know that it's very useful. Many mathematical frameworks are much easier in transfer function. We can talk about stability. We can talk about other kind of performance metrics. So we will talk about that later. So we will heavily use a Laplace transform and transfer function in our course. Okay. So in transfer function domain, it's not possible to talk about nonlinear systems in general. There are some extensions, of course, like which looks like transfer functions, but not exactly transfer function. There are also some time varying like uh, ex extensions of transfer functions such as harmonic transfer functions for PPL systems, but they're somewhat different and they're uh, advanced topics which are out of scope of our course. <coughs> okay, so the fourth is, which you may have a more uh, limited background, is the state space, okay, state space approach. Okay, state space are directly connected to the ordinate differential equations. In ordinate differential equations, your goal is obtaining an end order single differential equation which technically uh, explains the behavior between input and output for a single input, single output system. Okay, so it's kind of uh, limited to single input, single output systems, but differential equation, the state space, first of all, we are not limited to single input, multi-output systems, uh, but we still use differential equations, but instead of 
obtaining a one single giant order differential equation, we will try to break every differential equation into first order small parts, which are kind of connected to each other to obtain a representation like this. Okay, in the state space approach, we have x of t, we, these are the state variables, okay, y of t, which is our output, let's assume that it's a single output system, okay, we will generally talk about single output, uh, single input systems in this course, u of t is also an element of r, we have output, okay, so what we do is, we write a state space equation like this, x dot, x is a state vector, okay, so we are taking vector derivative is equal to a x plus b u, and y is equal to c x plus d u. Okay, as you can see, this is a first order matrix differential equation, right? It's first order, okay? The whole idea is, instead of one, uh, like, giant nth order differential equation, we will divide them into single order pieces and try to combine everything in a matrix equation. So in this representation, A is element of R, and by N it's a matrix square matrix. Similarly, B is equal to R and my cross 1, C is in to R 1 cross N, D is element of R. Okay, as you can see in the output equation where we technically map states and input to output, there's no differential equation. This is a simple algebraic linear equation. Okay, so uh, from my like, experience both in teaching and uh, academic and industry, I can say that state space representations are uh, very useful and important. We will generally talk about state space at the end of the course, but keep in mind that first of all, these representations are connected to each other. They have different benefits and other kind of drawbacks, such as computational uh, details. Okay, so now we are done with the uh, representation of dynamical systems. Now let's talk about what is a feedback system. Okay, feedback. Okay, good. So what's a feedback or what is not feedback? Okay, so feedback systems or feedback terminology uh, correspond to the case where dynamical systems, okay, so we have systems such as here, okay, so let's call it S1 and S2 are connected in a way that the output of each system influences in, or affects its own driving input. It can be directly or indirectly, okay? Uh, this is the basic idea. Input of a system affects its own, uh, output of a system affects its you know, input, such as looks like this. Okay, so if we have a feedback from the output, it looks like it's affecting its input, input is affecting the output, there's a really like complicated relationship in a feedback system. But in other words, if we don't have a feedback system, generally we have something like this, this is input, this is output, and output is nowhere near uh, affecting the input of the system, so it is kind of easier to analyze. Okay. Uh, in general, it's really hard to uh, have a good reasoning of the input-output relationship between in a feedback system as opposed to a, a feed-forward or open-loop system. So this is the first thing that you need to keep in mind in this course. Okay, it's very useful. We will talk about this, this advantages and benefits, but uh, we need formal techniques to talk about the behavior of a feedback system. Okay, let's go like this. So uh, let's assume that we have two systems. Okay, this is S1, this is S2. Okay, so if I connect these two systems in this manner, okay, such as this is a reference signal, this is an intermediate input signal or output signal and Y of T, okay. So we have like this, for example, this is like this, this can be like this, and if you look at the output, this goes like this, okay. This is an open loop or feed forward, forward uh, dynamical system. Okay, this is the basic idea. So if we have the same system, but we make some modifications such as like this. Okay, this is S1, this is S2. Okay, we have reference signal here, but what we do is we have an like a uh, difference block here, okay, this is minus, this is y of t, it goes like this, this is y of t, and now we have an error signal here, which is a typical feedback topology, negative feedback topology, 
and this is u of t now we have a feedback system as you can see e of t depends of on the reference signal which is external which is nice but it also depends on the output of the second system okay so this input is changing the behavior of s1 to produce u u is affecting s2 to produce y but y is also affecting e so these s1 and s2 are connected in a circular frame there is a circular argument s1 is affecting s2 s2 is affecting s1 so in that sense s1 is affecting itself and s2 is affecting itself so this is a very typical and very simple feedback topology okay so first of all i think it's clear that the analysis or understanding of feedback systems harder than feed forward systems okay so uh, what's the advantage of a feedback system so indeed for some systems feedback may not be mandatory okay so a feed forward or open loop topology just may be just fine okay even in some systems feedback may be not even the best choice it's not just even the need maybe feed forward is better but feedback topology or feedback control systems are so ubiquitous so common in the sense that feedback feedback okay reduces uncertainty uncertainty in systems and these are physical systems so what is uncertainty uncertainty you model the system right we talked about mathematical models but it's wrong okay so if you construct an open loop controller open the uh, topology based on the wrong model you know that there will be some mistakes at the output right it's unavoidable you will have this similar structure in the feedback system but the basic idea is because of this topology especially in negative feedback systems it reduces the uncertainty the errors in models the noises sensors actuators okay so there are inputs that you don't want that are affecting in the system let's talk about the airplane okay uh, there are like uh, turbulences other kind of things for example in an airplane wings technically oscillate you technically ignore in your controllers they are unwanted effects okay so the basic idea is feedback reduces uncertainty in dynamical systems which is super useful of course because we want to control the systems right we want to control its output, such as like the speed of a car, speed of a plane, altitude of a plane, which is even more critical because of the light safety standards and other kinds of things like uh, the temperature uh, of a refrigerator or like uh, temperature of a very, like a uh, highly important scientific equipment or something like that. Okay, so feedback is very important.